while on this incredible road trip, the Georgia Farm Monitor crew made our way through the Finger Lakes region, the region named because of a group of 11 long and narrow lakes in central New York. It is here we discovered one couple's love for wine and their deep appreciation for the Farm Bureau organization. New York's wine industry continues to grow rapidly. The New York grape, grape juice, and wine industry generates more than $4.8 billion in economic benefits annually for New York State. And there are over 1,600 family vineyards and over 400 wineries. The grape and wine industry is a collection of small family businesses. We had the chance to visit with the folks at Anthony Road Wine Company on the west side of Seneca Lake. The reason we call it Anthony Road is we live on Anthony Road. And when we sat down with friends to try to come up with, with a name for the place, you know, they all sound like a housing development or a shopping mall. So people started saying, how are things going down on Anthony Road? And we go, that works. We'll call it Anthony Road. John's partner in making all this happen is his wife, Ann. We go to Washington um, with Grape Growers of America, with uh, our, our Grape Growers, New York State Grape Growers, and Farm Bureau, and we meet with our legislators, and um, they're just a, a wonderful arm of the uh, agricultural aspect of New York that help us to get some of our legislation through. And, and they're always concerned about what's happening in, in this industry since it's grown so much over the past uh, 40 years since we've been here. It's just um, a huge expanse of vineyards and wineries. Basically, Farm Bureau has been an important organization for us for a number of reasons. When New York, especially, and I'm going to talk about New York Farm Bureau primarily, when all these changes started to happen in the, as the industry was growing, we saw that there were laws that were counterintuitive, to tell you the truth. We went with Farm Bureau to Farm Bureau and said, help us change these laws. And they had access, they were great. You know, the whole organization got behind us. So one by one, we started chipping at different rules, regulations, and laws that allowed us more latitude in shipping, in running our businesses, and in developing different grapes and different wines. John and Ann took us for a tour of their production facility on the beautiful Seneca Lake. The process only includes grapes grown in the Finger Lakes region. Well, these are all um, glacier-formed lakes, and so the soils are all very quite rich, and um, there's some sand banks going through different vineyards because of the lake shores over the uh, hundreds and hundreds of years have changed. And um, so they're, they're good soils. There's wonderful air drainage down to Seneca Lake, which is um, over 600 feet deep. This is our rosé of Cabernet Franc, um, and uh, about six, five or six years ago, Wine Spectator had a big article about how rosés are coming back into um, uh, people's favor, and, and for a long time people thought rosés, they see the color and they think a blush wine, sweet, you know, like uh, white Zinfandel, and uh, so Years ago in the 1800s, rosés were very popular in Europe and France in particular, and they were always quite dry. And so, we, uh, with that in mind, people started doing a lot more rosés. And so, you know, word of mouth. <laughs> and we have a survey done about every three years. What's the value of the industry to the state of New York? It's currently just under five billion dollars, 4.8 billion. You don't have to hit a politician over the head with $5 billion too many times. They don't want to stand up and say, I can help. And, and so, good. But, you know, 20 years ago when we were starting with Farm Bureau to cruise the halls and say, you know, this is important, this is important. Now they get it. But if it weren't for some of those changes, we wouldn't be here the way we are. 